Ayan. So, we are already recording po. So, we can start our lesson. So, last meeting, I have sent you a video on our last topic for um, common competencies in household servicing, mainly focusing on establishing relationship with clients. So, I hope that you have watched the video and ginawa na din si activity natin on making semi-detailed lesson plan. So for today's meeting, we are going to discuss another topic for home economics, which is the tailoring and dressmaking. So we all know that it is part of home economics, uh, part of household chores that we are sometimes we are doing at our homes. So let's discuss teaching common competencies in tailoring and or dressmaking. So dressmaking, uh, the dressmaking NC2 or the qualifications consists of competencies that a person must achieve to enable him or her to draft and cut pattern. Layout pattern on material, fabric, so material, and fabric, and apply finishing touches on the ladies' casual apparel of the garment sector. Casual apparel consists of casual dress, blouse, skirt, trousers, shorts, and clothes. So in dressmaking, ang tinuturo dito is, is how to um, actually make a dress. So that's why it is called dressmaking mostly or particularly in women's garment. Yeah. So, dito tayo magli-layout ng pattern or gagawa ng pattern, um, magtakat ng tela, magtatahi ng tela. Dito po sa dressmaking. So, next, we also have tailoring. So, the tailoring and C2 qualifications consist of competencies that a person must achieve that will enable him or her to draft and cut pattern, layout pattern, and material fabric, so material fabric, and apply finishing touches on men's casual apparel of the garment sector. So casual apparel for men, including polo, short sleeves, shorts, and jogging pants. So kung mapapansin nyo, um, tailoring is for uh, women, uh, men's garment. Kasi dressmaking naman is for women's garment. So, same lang siya. Um, cutting pattern, lay, uh, laying out the pattern, um, sewing the pattern, or sewing the cut fabric material to create the certain um, garments for men. So, now we are going to discuss the common competencies. So, same lang po sila ng common competencies, si tailoring and si dressing. So, we have the use of sewing tools, carry, uh, carrying out measurements and calculations, uh, create design for simple project and perform basic maintenance. So, ano bang minimin dito na carrying out measurements and calculations? Of course, um, in laying out the pattern or doing the pattern, we are using measuring equipments and we should learn also about the unit of measurements being used. And actually, how to properly um, measure uh, a person's physique or yung size and shape ng katawan nila. So, dun tayo nag-measure, dun tayo nag -based. So, we have also create design for simple project, meaning creating or making um, designs you know, or layouts or um, drawings of uh, different projects. So, ano ba yung dapat natin i-follow, dapat natin um, or what are the principles that we have to follow in creating a design. So, dun yan discuss. Next is perform basic maintenance. Maintenance of sewing machine, um, sewing tools, and etc. So, let us first discuss use of sewing tools. So, ito muna yung i-discuss natin today. So, we have learning outcome number one is to identify sewing tools and equipment and their uses.
So what is our required knowledge? Sewing tools and equipment are being identified. The types of sewing machines are classified and their uses are identified. And for required skills naman, using sewing tools and sewing machines or equipment according to its function. So what is our content? So we have sewing tools and equipment and types of sewing machines. So for conditions, so in order for us to teach this certain competency properly or effectively, we must provide this following. So we have workplace location, materials relevant to the unit of competency, materials and tools, handouts and instructional materials. So for methodologies, we can do lecture demonstration, self-paced instruction, group discussion, PowerPoint um, presentation. So for assessment methods, we can do direct observation, written test, or oral questioning. So now let's uh, move on to the topic, which is the sewing tools and equipment, or the contents of use tools and equipment. So, sewing equipment, different tools are used in garment construction. So, the skillful use of the different sewing equipment will help take body measurement and drafting pattern with accuracy and speed. So, success in sewing calls for the right tools at the right time. So, all tools must be appropriate in a proper order. One must know how to use them to save time and produce the best result. So, in this lesson, we will provide or will provide knowledge and skills of different tools and equipment which are necessary in sewing. So a complete of sewing tools and equipment are presented to help the students work faster. So during our college years, so since my um, major is TLE, pinagawa tayo na, or one of the topic being discussed where one of the subjects discussed was um, sewing or clothing. Ayan. So, dito, tig-providean kami, I mean, um, sewing machines. Ayan. And it's our job to buy uh, different tools necessary for um, doing the skills. So, in terms of you teaching in high school, let's say, for example, um, since you're, since ngayon na, halimbawa, magtuturo tayo ng grade 7 and 8, mostly, kailangan mo pa rin tong matutunan, even though that you are a part of food service management or electronics, yan, kailangan pa din, lalo na if you are um, in a school na wala masyadong teachers, and you have to teach this uh, things, dapat knowledgeable pa rin tayo regarding how to use the equipments, the tools, and how to sew. Ayan. So, dapat marunong yung tayo. So, we have different uh, set of tools. We have the first one, which is measuring tools. So, we use tape measure, a flexible measuring device used and taking body measurements. The front has the measurement of 150 centimeters and 60 inches on the other side. So fiber glass tape is commonly used by dressmakers. So mostly tape measure ginagamit natin ano, to measure our body in terms of or before sewing or plotting the pattern. So, minemeasure muna natin yung body nung magsusuot ng garment. So, ano ba yung unit of measurement na ginagamit natin dito? So, we have inches and centimeters. So, next we have a sewing gauge. So, a small ruler with a sliding guide and is about 6 inches long. So, this gauge is used for measurements at hem lines buttonholes, and areas where other small measurements require settings such as pleats and tucks. So the gauge is usually made of metal or plastic. So for measuring small um, areas or measurement lang naman sa garment, like for example, gagawa ka ng 
um, yun nga, pleats dun sa damit. May measure pa natin yan so that it's um, equal to the other side. Or, halimbawa, the spaces or the distance between buttons. Ito din yung ginagamit natin to measure. Next is ruler. A ruler measuring 12 inches or even 18 inches, either clear or solid, it is useful tool to have a measuring and drawing straight seam lines and cutting lines. So it also aids in connecting lines. A clear ruler is also good tool for marking button holes. So rulers, pwede siyang gamitin uh, on placing or uh, marking the cloth with straight lines. Halimbawa, kailangan mo um, ng straight line talaga to uh, para mapantay yung um, ginagawa mo. Then, you have to measure it with a ruler. So, yung mga clear ruler naman daw, ginagamit din as a tool to measure for button holes. Next is a yardstick is made of smooth shellac hardwood or metal it is used for making hemlines and checking green lines when laying out a pattern so ano ba sinasabi dito ng hemlines or green lines so in checking or creating a um dress or tailored pants or etc or garments si yardstick ginagamit siya lalo na pag uh, malaking um tela yung i-layout natin or ipapattern natin. So, ginagamit din to to check the hemlines or ibig sabihin yung green lines yung kung saan yung parang ano ng tela, yung um, pattern, kung pa-horizontal, uh, kung pa-vertical ba yan. So, ito yung ginagamit natin pa. Axisan L square. The Taylor square or L is used to transfer measurements to the draft pattern. It also divides the garment into desired measurement. It has perfect squares and is useful in making straight lines and numbers. So it can also function as a tape measure. So it has two arms connected perpendicularly. So the longer arm is 24 inches long and the shorter arm is 14 inches. So, ginagamit siya to have perfect square or making straight lines and numbers. Next is French curve. This is used to shape the depth of the neck hole and the armhole of the foot pattern. So, if you uh, if we are using French curve in order for us to uh, we use this as uh, to shape you know, or to create the pattern dun sa armhole para mas maganda yung finishing or maganda yung itsura and also dun sa neck hole. Shape talaga siya no? um or ka-shape niya yung body type or body na isang tao. Next is cutting tools. So these are the cutting tools. Cutting tools are instrument that serve well, if properly maintained. So, sharp cutting tools make clean cuts and well-defined notches and they do not damage the crop. On the other hand, dull tools slowly the cutting process or slow the cutting process and make your hands and wrists tire easily. So, sewing cutting tools should not be used for other household tasks. So, cutting tools must be sharpened regularly and the joints are oiled occasionally for better use. So, we also have different cutting tools, lalo na in the specific different uses. So, dapat yung ginagamit natin cutting tools for fabrics, for um, tailoring, dressmaking, uh, hindi dapat natin siya ginagamit sa ibang bagay or sa different household tasks. So, kung ang gunting ay pang tela lang, pang tela lang, dapat. Because, the main reason kung bakit madaling um, mawala yung sharpness or nagiging dal yung cutting tools is because hindi natin siya ginagamit sa isang um, process lang or sa isang uh, task lang. And also, it should be maintained. Nilalagyan 
yung joints ng um, oil and it is or it is it must be sharpened regularly. We have the bent handle press making shears. So these are made of quality steel and hold a sharp cutting edge. So the blade moves easily and cuts smoothly along the entire length and the points should come together. So shears have the length of 7 to 12 inches and are satisfactory for most apparel fabrics. So all steel chrome plated shears are for heavy duty cutting. Stainless steel blades and plastic handles are fine for lightweight fabrics and a serrated edge shears gives maximum cutting control and is used for synthetic fibers and slippery gates. So we have uh, yung mga bent handle, ito talaga yung ginagamit natin pang, so makikita nyo naman dito, di ba? Pang um, cut talaga ng fabrics. So meron tayo iba-iba, meron chrome plated, so para dun yan sa matitigas na tela nga or makakapal. Um, stainless with plastic handles, ginagamit sa lightweight, ibig sabihin mas magaan na fabrics. Yung serrated naman, ginagamit sa mga um, slippery or synthetic fibers. Kagaya ng satin. Ayan, so madulas siya. So yun po yung ginagamit natin. So we have pinking shears. Pinking shears, this is a popular in zigzagging or scallop edge or for seam finishes. So this is used to finish seams and draw edges and good decor create decorative edges on many types of fabric. So it cuts a rival resistant edge. This is not satisfactory for straight cutting. Ayan. So hindi siya ginagamit for straight cutting because it's not um, very easy to use. Ayan. So ginagamit siya to create a or to finish a seam and to decorate a edges of the cloth or fabric. So next we have a cutting scissor. So we have three cutting scissors. We have the first one which is trimming scissors. So it is a three to four inches long. It is used for trimming, trimming threads and snipping slashes. Next is we have embroidery scissor. So it has four to five inches and the tapered blades. Both joints are sharp for use in working fine detail in delicate fabrics in embroidery work. So we are using this for embroidery. Ayan. So cutting the fine details. So if you are working with fine details, halimbawa, kailangan mong tanggalin yung um, so, sobrang um, what you call this, mga thread, ayan. So, ito yung ginagamit natin in terms of embroideries. Next is a buttonhole scissor. So, this is intended for making buttonholes. So, ito yung ginagamit natin ng cut para gumawa ng buttonholes. Next is a thread clippers. So, thread clippers are a handy little spring-loaded cutting tool that allows for the snipping of threads. These clippers are specifically used to snip threads and they are not designed to cut fabric. Ayan, so pang thread lang talaga siya or pang cut lang ng thread. So next is a seam reaper. Seam reapers are specifically designed for ripping out stitches from seams either as a result of an error or during alteration. So they should be used carefully to prevent damage to the fabric. So, ginagamit natin to in order for us to avoid um, yung pagkasira ng fabric, lalo na pagtatanggalin natin yung um, stitches. So, lalo na pag yung halimbawa, di ba, nagpapaano tayo. Um, nagpapaayos. O na, di ba, papalakin mo or papasikipan mo, gumagamit yung tailor or dressmaker ng seam reaper para hindi masyadong halata or babakat yung um, pinagtahiyan. Next is a rotary cutter and mat. So it is an adoption of giant rotary 
cutter so used for garment industry this it works like a pizza cutter and can be used by left or right handed sewers so the rotary cutter is available in different sizes with different blades so when using a rotary cutter work on a cutting mat to protect the blade and cutting surfaces so ito ko yung mostly itsura ng mat na ginagamit lalo na pag gumagamit tayo ng rotary cutter so in terms of cutting the cloths Mostly, mas madali itong gamitin si rotary cutter kasi sa um, scissors. Kasi parang i-roll out mo lang siya like pizza. Yan. So, next, we have marking tools. So, marking tools are required for transferring pattern markings to the garment. So, fabric pieces and for making alterations on the garments. So, we have a chalk pencils or dressmaking pencil. So, this is available in white or pastel shades. So, this chalk pencils is used to make fine lines on fabrics. It has an erasing brush at one end. So, ito yung ginagamit natin to, um, of course, to mark the fabric. And to make fine lines daw po sa fabric. So, na-erase siya using an erasing brush at the end of the um, dress making pencil or chalk pencil. So we also have a liquid marking pen. So a liquid marking pen comes in two types. So there is one that washes out and one that fades after 48 hours. So those that wash out should not be used on fabric that show watermark. So the mark should be removed before pressing the fabric. So yung um kailangan pang i-wash out or labhan para lang matanggal, dapat daw remove muna siya before pressing or uh, bag, ano ba yung pressing? Yung gagamitan natin ng plancha to press or to um, make the thin lines uh, appealing no? and flatten. Ayan. So, para uh, magandang tingnan. So, Dapat daw po uh, i-wash out muna yung liquid marking pen. So, meron naman tayo yung like, fades uh, after 48 hours. So, next we have a tailor stock. So, this is essential as a marker for use on material. So, tailor stock is available in a range of colors and is removed by brushing. So, mostly ito yung nakikita ko or ginagamit talaga um, or readily available in the market here in the Philippines. So, most ito yung ginagamit namin once uh, uh, nung college kami. Tailors chalk. Next is a uh, wax chalk. So, this is available in black or white and is used for woolen fabrics. So, wax can be removed by pressing. So, ito naman, once we press or halimbawa, pinansya yung fabric, matatanggal na yung wax. So, next we have a tracing wheel. So, there are two types of tracing wheels. Those with serrated edge and those with smooth edge. The serrated edge will produce dots on the fabrics and is suitable for most type of the fabrics. So, the smooth edge wheel is best for delicate fabrics and unlike the serrated edge will not pierce more delicate fabrics. So, the smooth edge wheel creates a solid line. So, tracing wheel, halimbawa, um, you have marked the fabric na. So, mas magandang gumamit ng tracing wheel dahil na pag straight lines lang naman yung gagawin in terms of pagtatahe. Ayan. So, para mas madali yung pagtatahe or mas smooth flowing yung pagtatahe. And also, may trace ka na kung saan mo papaanda rin yung or saan mo itatapat yung needle. Next is a dressmaker's carbon paper. So dressmaking's uh dressmaker's carbon paper, also called dressmaker's tracing paper, is especially wax carbon paper that transfer the tracing wheels markers to the fabric. So a color of tracing paper should be chosen that is close to the colors of the of the fabric. So different brands of tracing paper have different instructions. So therefore, the instruction for the particular brand that is purchased should be followed. 
So, ito naman yung ginagamit natin as markings to uh, wheel markings to the fabric. So, ginagamit natin to uh, close to the color of the fabric. Next, we have pinning and sewing tools. So, we have what we call pin cushion. So, ito yung pinagtutusukan ng, um, or mostly ganitong itsura niya, no? parang tomato. So, pinagtutusukan uh, ng pins and needles. So, pin cushion holds the straight pins and needles while working to prevent accidents. Next, we have a hand needle. It is used in making temporary stitches. And button hole. So sizes of 7 to 10 are generally general hand sewing. So next sewing needle and threader. It aids in putting the threads to the needle. It con it is consists of two parts, the handle and the wire. So the end of the wire that is away from the holder is folded. Place the folded wire of the needle threader through the eye of the sewing needle. So, paano ba gamitin si um, sewing needle? So, ito, itong um, small or the folded wire, you have to insert it here in the uh, hole, no, nung needle. Then, right after that, ilalagay na natin yung thread or ipapasok dito. Uh, then, hihilahin na natin tong sewing needle thread. So, para mas easy yung um, paglagay ng thread dun sa needle. Lalo na kung malabo na yung mata, mas maganda ang gumamit nito. Mas mapapabilis din yung um, paglagay ng thread sa needle. Next is a thimble. A small, hard, pitted cup worn for protection on the finger that pushes the needle and sewing. So, in sewing kasi... Pag, lalo na pag hand sewn, walang gagawin yung, um, or mag-hand sewn ka, masyadong masakit yun sa um, finger. Lalo na kung matigas yung fabric. Ayan. So, in order to protect ourselves from, yun nga, uh, accidents, or let's say, para hindi sumakit yung fingers natin, gumagamit tayo ng thimble. Next, what are the different materials we use in sewing? So, we have the first one which is fabric, of course. So, the fabric is the cloth used in making garments. So, the plain cotton fabrics, flower socks, or katcha is the most appropriate material for beginners because these are very easy to handle. So, ang uh, pinakamahirap na fabric na i-handle is yung mga um, slippery fabric. Like set for example, satin, ayan, yan yung um, mahihirap na gamitin fabric. And yung sobrang nipes and also yung mga sobrang kapal. So, depende din yun sa kung anong gagamitin nating machine. So, next is the thread or a thread. is used in assembling or constructing the parts of garments. Threads vary in sizes. So, heavy fabrics need stronger threads and threads should have the same color with the fabric that is being used. So, yung thread, meron tayong different colors depending on the fabric that we are going to use. Meron din siyang different sizes. So, of course, pang heavy fabrics, dapat mas strong yung thread. Kasi mostly, if manipis yung thread at yun ang gagamitin mo, ang tendency or ang mangyayari is once na ginamit natin siya sa sewing machine, mabilis siyang maputol. Lalo na kung makapal yung fabric na ginagamit natin. Next, we have the different types of sewing machines. So, well-selected sewing machines is essential for achieving good results. It should be used correctly in accordance with the job requirements. So, meaning, dapat ginagamit natin to in terms of Um, its job requirements or kumpara saan ba yung um, ginagamit natin or gagawin natin na trabaho. So, depende sa equipment na gagamitin. 
So we have the first one, which is lock stitch sewing machine. So this is usually used in homes and sometimes in school. So this is also called domestic sewing machine. So it is run by foot and may also be converted to electric power machine. So kung nakakita na kayo, I, I know that you are familiar with this brand singer and most ito yung nakikita natin here in the Philippines. So uh, pwede siyang ginagamit using footwork or run by foot yung susuing natin back and forth. Or meron din naman siyang electric power. So parang may ilalagay na sa kanyang motor. Tapos I, I tatapakan na lang natin yung or may tatapakan na lang tayo na parang um, yun nga, may tatapakan then automatically uh, mag-run na to, specifically yung ito so meron yan, nakakabit na dyan yung motor hindi mo na kailangan yung i-run by foot, i-prepress mo na lang siya, then dire-diretso na yung pagtatahe so, we also have a high-speed lock stitch sewing machine. Machine. This is sometimes called straight stitching machine or industrial sewing machine. So, it has automatic lubrication and is used by tailors and dressmakers. So, ito yung mas more, um, parang tawag dyan, modern used for lock stitch sewing machine. Next is over-edging machine. Other companies call it small machine. So, it finishes the raw edges of the patterns for construction. Ayan. So, ito yung mostly ginagamit to finish the raw edges of a cloth or garments. So, mostly ginagamit siya sa companies or industrial um, use. Next is an embroidery machine. So, this is used in making fancy stitches in in making different kinds of embroidery stitches on fabrics for the barong, Tagalog, um, pillowcases, linens, and other novelty items. So, lalo na kung may logo na ginagamit, gumagamit tayo ng embroidery, ma embroidery machine. So, ngayon, meron na tayong modern na embroidery machine. Ayan, kagaya nitong brother brand. So, lalagay mo lang yung logo or yung picture ng logo. Then, automatically, the um, machine will work its way on doing the logo or the embroidery work. So next we have a button holder machine. So a button holder machine, this is used in making button holes in the garments. So kung makikita niyo yung button holes, lalo na pag sa mga ready to wear uh, or clothes that are made through uh, uh, yung parang tawag dito, yung produced by, uh, let's say, companies or industrial or mga ready to wear. Yun nga. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung sa button hose, um, fine yung pagkakagawa, lalo na yung sa body or dun sa palibot ng um, holes, ng button holes. Ayan. So, ito po yung ginagamit as a machine para magawa ayun. So, magawa yun. Next is a button attachment machine. This is used in attaching buttons to the garment. So, meron din tayong button attachment. Ito yung naglalagay ng buttons dun sa places or dun sa fabric. So, next we have a double needle machine. So, a double needle machine, this is used in the construction of different kinds of clothing, especially for the inseam, outseam, and the side seam. So, double needle, halimbawa, dun sa... Um, kailangan mo nga yung i-lock lalo na yung sa mga seamless. Kung halimbawa, if you are familiar with seamless um, clothing, ayan. so mostly ginagamit nila yung double needle machine. So, um, dalawang needles working its way to make a fine um, type of stitching or yun nga, pag sisim. Next is a bar tacking machine. Bar tacking machine, which is used in reinforcing the opening and closing of the packets. So, ayan. So, for packets naman, or for making packets, ito yung kinagawit with nating machine. So, next, we are going to discuss the different parts of a lock stitch sewing machine. So, we have two major, 
major parts of Luxit sewing machine. We have the upper and lower parts. So, kaya ito yung dinidiscuss uh, lagi kasi ito yung mostly used here in the Philippines or mostly used by tailors and um, dressmakers. Ayan. So, we have what we call the head. Head is the complete sewing machine without a cabinet or step. So, the arm is the curved part of the head containing mechanism for operating the needle. So, next is bed is a flat portion of the machine and beneath is the feet dog where it is mounted and shuttle lower thread or threads are placed. So, ito yung tinatawag nating head. Ano? Ito po, si head. So, ito naman po si arm and ito naman po si bed. So, this part is the bed, the head, and the arm. So, we have different parts of sewing machine in the arm. So, we have what we call a spool spin is the threader holder. So, ito po yung spool spin, ano? Yung threader holder. Ayan. So, we have a thread guide keeps the threads in position. So, thread guide ito. Ayan. So, pupunta siya dito. Then, dito. Ayan. Tapos may papasukan pa dito. Then, dun nasa may circle or hole again here. Then, dun nasa sa knitted. So, ito po yung tinatawag nating um, thread guide. So, next is a thread take-up lever. So, ito yung thread take-up lever. Yan yung nag, uh, tumataas tapos bumababa. Yan. Once na nag yung or nag yung um, sewing machine. So, parang siya yung humihigit nung thread. So, it releases the thread and interlocks with the bobbin thread. So, para um, sumikip din yung pagtatahe. So, ayan. Yan yung lever. So, pressure bar lift moves the pressure foot. So, Pressure bar, bar leaf mostly na sa likod yan nila navigate. So, parang lever lang siya na uh, up and down. So, ang minumove niyan is itong pressure foot. Itong nakikita nyo sa baba ito. So, once na maglalagay pa lang tayo ng fabric, we have to lift the pressure bar para mas uh, control natin yung pagtasok ng ano. And para mailagay natin yung fabric dun sa pinakaboto. Kasi pag once na nakababa na yung pressure bar, masikip na yung um, attachment niya or kapit niya dun sa fabric. So, next is attention. Controls the looseness and tightness of the stitches. Ayan. So, itong tension, um, we are parang controlling, hindi naman controlling. Inaayos natin siya uh, based on the uh, stitch na gusto mong gawin. So, meron tayong long stitch, meron naman tayong yung uh, um, high and low stitch, yung maliliit na section, yung mga ganto-ganto lang. Yan, maliliit na section nung um, pagkatahe. Now, if you are using this tension, uh, it controls the uh, kung gaano kasikip or gaano uh, may i-adjust yung thread. So, ito yung pag parang pansikip or pang um, luwag nung um, daan nung thread. So, pag masyado siyang masikip, mostly ang tendency na puputol yung thread. So, pag sakto lang naman, maganda yung pagtatahe. Pag sobrang luwag, makikita nyo yan dun sa bottom of the or bottom part of your uh, fabric, pag sino mo siya, pangit yung pagkakalagay. Hindi masikip, hindi maayos yung pagkakatahe. So, next, um, we have a needle bar holds the needle in place. So, ito po yung needle bar. Ito. So, meron siyang uh, needle clamp holds the tightness of the needle. Ayan. So, in order for us to put the needle, kailangan mo siyang i-unscrew yung needle clamp and pang pasikip din siya. Or sisikpan mo din siya. Ayan. 
So, next is a pressure foot holds the fabric in place while sewing. Ito yung pressure foot naman. So, ito yung controlled by the pressure bar lift. Ayan. So, needle is a slender tool attached in the needle clamp for sewing, for use for sewing. So, we have different types of needle. So, yung needle mostly ginagamit uh, or sometimes it's being used for, or we have different types of it. Meron na for soft fabric lang or meron din naman tayo for hard fabric. Lalo na yung mga ampants baga na fabric, yung type of fabric. Mostly, pag gumamit tayo ng standard na um, needles, ang tendency mapuputol kasi hindi niya niya kaya yung um, heaviness or the um, kung gano'ng kakapal yung fabric. So, depending on the needle na bibili nyo, nakadepende yun sa fabric. Next is a bobbin winder. So, controls the bobbin while winding the thread. So, ito yung bobbin winder. So, mostly if you're going to create or um this bobbin winder, dito natin nilalagay yung nandito sa baba. Uh, yung para malagyan siya ng um, ang tawag doon? Ng thread. So, next, we have a stitch regulator checks the length of the stitches. So, ito yung stitch regulator. So, dito natin naman i-set kung gusto nga natin yung parang um, longer type of lock stitch or the shorter version. So, pag longer, of course, uh, if you're familiar, mas mahaba yung um, pagtatahi niya. And yung sa uh, lower naman is mas maliliit yung pagkakastitch. Next is a balance wheel sets the mechanism in motion. So, we have the balance wheel ito. Um, si balance wheel, lalo na pag gumagamit tayo or wala tayong motor na ginagamit, um, before using that, you are going to um, hihilahin mo muna yung balance wheel pababa. So, pababa, then, tsaka ka makakapag-start mag up and down or maggamit ng foot mo. Ayan. So, kung gumagamit ka naman ng um, what we call that, the motor, na para automatic na lang siya, hindi mo na siya i-run by foot. Kailangan mo pa rin siyang i-ganon or sometimes i-prepress mo na lang yung uh, dun sa baba na connected dun sa motor. So next, next is a belt connects the balance wheel to the drive wheel. So yung by drive wheel kasi yung um, tawag dyan? Yung belt, mostly ang ginagamit noon, nung time namin kasi nung nagagawa kami ng college, um, most nung mga ito, senior na uh, lock stitch sewing machine, wala silang yung parang yung belt nga. So, mostly talaga meron siyang nabibiling belt na specifically specifically used for this type of um, sewing machine. Pero pag wala, we can use, uh, ano nga ang tawag ba? Yung sisinusot natin in order for us uh, not to show our legs. Ano nga ang tawag ba? Anyone na makakapagsabi sa akin? Nasa tip na ng dila ko, hindi ko lang masabi. Stocking? Yun, stockings. Yes, correct. Miss Mary Rose Pantanares. Ayan. So, yung stockings, yun yung mostly pinapagamit sa amin to nagamitan uh, as belt. So, nakakonect siya sa balance wheel to the drive wheel. So, ito po yung balance wheel. So, drive wheel connected siya dun sa baba. Dun sa bottom part or sa lower part ng sewing machine. So, next we have the parts of sewing machine under the bed. So, ito naman yung dito na. Under the bed. Dito tong part na to, or sa bed area. So, we have a feed dog moves the fabric while sewing. So, feed dog, ayan po, yung parang serrated edge nun, ayan po yung feed dog. So, yan yung nag-move doon sa fabric. 
So, throat plate is the windows of feed dog. It is where the bobbin threads comes out. So, mostly, dito yan makikita ito. Ito yung um, throat plate. So, tinatanggal siya para makabit natin um, yung, or dito ito pala yung throat plate. So, it is a window for feed dog. Ayan, so it shows the feed dog. Ayan. Ayan, may mga buntas dyan. Next is the slide plate. Ito pala yung sinasabi ko. Ito yung slide plate. So, dito naman yung tinatanggal natin in order for us to see the bobbin case and also the bobbins. So, bobbin is a uh, shuttle holds the bobbin case while sewing. So, yung shuttle, ayan. Ito yung shuttle area. So, nabibili din yan. Available. Ito, shuttle. Ayan yung shuttle, ha? Next. Um, bobbin is a um, metal spool for winding the thread. Ayan yung nilalagyan ng thread naman. Sa loob yan makikita. So, we have bobbin case holds the bobbin. Ayan yung bobbin case. Ito yung shuttle. Ayan. So, next, the lower parts of lock stitch sewing machine. The lower parts of sewing machine are the cabinet and the stand. So, the cabinet has the drawers and screw on the hinges of the attachment of the head. The following are the lower parts of the sewing machine and their pieces. So, if we're going to use a motor or motor type na ganito, hindi na natin kailangan ng lower parts na ganito. So, mostly nakakabili naman ng ganitong um, ready to use or table talaga place on or being uh, as the lock stitch sewing machine being placed on. So, mga kabili tayo niyan in the market. So, we have band wheel. It leads the balance through the belt connection. So, ito po yung band wheel. Ayan, ito yung band wheel. So, dyan naman natin nilalagay yung um, belt Ayan. So, the band wheel crank moves the band wheel. Ayan. Ito yung band wheel crank. Ayan. So, ito yung connected dito sa cradle. So, we have pitman rod holds the cradle to the band wheel crank. So, pitman rod. Ayan. Ito yung connecting. Ayan. Dun sa cradle. Ayan. Then, band wheel crank. Then, the band wheel itself. Yung umiikot yan. Next is the belt guide holds the belts in place. Ayan. Uh, we have a belt shifter removes the belt from the wheel. So we have a belt shifter. Next is a dress guard protects the dress from the wheel. Ayan. Oh, dress guard. Ayan. So nakapalibot siya dun sa band wheel. Next is a treadle is where the feet are stationed to drive the band. Where wheel through the feet man so, ayan. Ito naman yung ibinabak and forth ng feet natin or ng foot natin while doing work, while sewing. So, next is a cabin. Legs support the cabinet of the machine. Ayan. Ito yung legs. Ayan. Ito yung legs. Next is cabinet holds the head of the machine by interlocking the screw on the hinges. So, we have the cabinet. Ayan. So, dito naman natin inilalagay yung or ini-screw yung um, machine itself. So, that would be the end of our discussion. So, I hope that you are familiar with um, the um, parts of the Lux Stitch Sewing Machine, the different um, machines or equipments being used in sewing and also the cutting tools, the marking tools, uh, and the materials being used for sewing. Ayan. So, mostly, paunti-unti, meron lumalabas nito sa examination. Lalo na sa parts ng um, ito nga, itong um, sewing machine. So, I hope you are going to be familiar with the parts and also the um, materials being used in sewing machines or in sewing. So, I will turn off na po the record. So, wait lang po.